Hey everyone, just wanted to showcase some reporting in SAP SuccessFactors Employee Central Payroll. And I uh, specifically want to take a look at, at uh, reporting across both data from the core HR environment, Employee Central, as well as the payroll environment, Employee Central Payroll, and having that together. So to kind of start this demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate over to an employee, Ellen Record. Uh, and I'm just going to show some of the data for, for where she is. So if I go over to her uh, employment information. I'm going to highlight a few things. She's in a company code 1710, which is best run U.S. Uh, her department is HR department U.S. And you can see division, uh, business unit corp, corp services, uh, even cost center. She's in the HR cost center as we'd expect. So just wanted to showcase that, that this is the field that we have in Employee Central, which by the way, do not live in payroll. These are HR uh, data fields only. However, we have a tool, EPUS Query Manager, that allows uh, the reporting across both HR and payroll, including like being able to select things on a selection screen, uh, being able to see the output of those kind of in a combined, very tactical report where you can get the level of detail that you need. So in this case, I have a report that goes and looks at gross and the net amount for both core HR and payroll. And so you can see I can enter a uh, period here. So in this case, I, I could run, you know, 1-1-2023 one, one, to like an entire calendar year, 12-31-2023. And then I could filter this saying, hey, only look within, you know, a certain company code or cost center or department or division. And once again, these are fields that are in success factors, employee central. And so uh, one of the cool things about Query Manager is if you run a report and then you exit out, it isn't just gone. You can actually keep um, a variant or of those reports that actually has that same output. So rather than run this and, and wait for the runtime, I'm just going to click to a report that I previously ran. And this report is uh, for my U.S. population for the entire calendar year of 2023. And so I can expand this out. And you can see here it's Ellen Record. And so you can see uh, the, the dates here. In this case, you know, the, the start date for the period, the end date. So each of the payrolls starting at the very bottom right here, 1-1-2023 for 115. So this is a semi-monthly payroll. You can see the pay date. You can see, you know, it, uh, the uh, company, the business unit, the department that I specifically called out, HR US, division corporate services, and you can see each one of the payments to uh, Ellen, right? So here's the gross pay amount, here's the net pay amount, and you can kind of see, in this case for Ellen, she was um, very statically paid the same amount for e each pay period. If I want to go back and, and take a look at this, I'll navigate back over to uh, Ellen's profile. Take a look at her payroll information within success factors. I can go to her pay statement. And you can kind of come and take a look at this. So like December 29th, 2,549 is the net amount. Uh, the gross amount here is the uh, 3,339. So if I go back over to the report, here's your gross amount. The actual payroll I was looking at was this one, uh, the 1216 to 1231. So. 3,339 and 2,549.92. So uh, you can see that right here. And then you can scroll down and see the net 2,599.42. And so the cool thing about this is this is for uh, the entire group. So I can kind of look this across pay periods and across like an entire calendar year. And uh, one of the functionalities that you can also do is be able to filter on this. So if I want to just look at, you know, let's just say just the HR department, I can uh, do so. And now it automatically filters based upon um, the HR department. So if I scroll down, I can see other people that are within my HR department. And I can see the gross amount, the net amounts, um, employee central data uh, in terms of the groupings of these people. So I can group that here. Uh, and then if I would like to, I can even get the summed up amount. So if I scroll here to the right, gross pay, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Scroll to the right here, net pay. I will sum this up as well, kind of expand this back out. And so now I, I have uh, the, for my entire calendar year, for my HR US department, the field in Employee Central, I can see the exact dollar amount of gross pay, net pay. 
Uh, one of the things you, you always uh, have people ask also is if you can take this and export it so you can. I know people love Excel and they want to take it and you know maybe rather than sorting and filtering here, you want to kind of do that over there. So I can see this um, here. So now if I come out here and, and take out this uh, filter, so I'm going to remove my filter. The summed up uh, values are still over there. It's obviously a much bigger report now, and I can scroll to the bottom, but you can kind of see, you know, the number I got to make this bigger, but, you know, my gross pay across the entire U.S. company code for the entire calendar year was more in the lines of 16800 and uh, 12 million is for my, my net pay. And so you're able to kind of see this. I can save one report for US. If I want to go look at uh, Canada, which I had a different report I ran. By the way, you can share these uh, with other people on your team that have the authorization. So now I can see here, different company code here, best run Canada, uh, and also departments and things uh, along with it. If I scroll over to the right, I can still see the, the gross pay net pay. Um, one of the really cool things, I think, is that you can also have consolidated reporting across uh, different countries, too. So I can even have a global report that goes across U.S. and Canada and kind of combine that data together as well. And so here you can say I have best run France. I can filter this and say, hey, you know, just have, um, in this case, I have France, U.S. or Canada. I can sort and filter and have all this data together if I want to. So depending on how you want to look at this, you're able to uh, get this report. To give you a couple more examples of other reports that you might want, I have a report here that also pulls in data from SuccessFactors using um, our query manager, SuccessFactors connector. And so in this case, I'm, I'm going to pull back a report specifically looking at like regular pay uh, for an hourly person, but also uh, overtime and things like that, right? And so. Taking a look at this, I have a lot of the same type of fields because I want to look at that, same pay dates. But then on the right side here, I have four different columns, regular working time, uh, late night premium, overtime, and overtime at 1.5. And so one of the things you'll see here is I actually have a, a sort on here, so I want this to be highest to lowest. So very easily I could come, run an overtime report, have the data with specifics to success factors, and then I can sort it and say, okay, who in the company is getting the most overtime and how much is it? And then I could even sum these up if, if I wanted to and get the totals of, hey, how much are we paying in overtime overall as a company? And I'm able to kind of see that data very quickly, very easily. Um, in this case, I even have a regular working time in here for my hourly population. Obviously, I do not have a big hourly population in here, but I'm able to kind of see that data. So I've shown gross pay, I've shown net pay, uh, now I'm showing kind of hourly uh, reporting for like overtime or even regular work hours, and you can kind of see this. If I wanted to key in on a specific pay period, I can even do that, right? So uh, if I just want to come and sort this and say, hey, um, pay date for payroll results, I think it was 113, 2023. I can just get you know the the specific pay date and look at that and say hey this is the amount from here so very very powerful tool where I can go in and kind of get the data that I, I need and so I'll remove this filter now and so I'll take this out but I'm able to quickly add filters I'm able to sort directly from here obviously like I said before you can spit this out to Excel um, if you want reports on employee data so in I'm in the US so I'll use the example here of withholding information and being able to look at, at, at data for uh, the withholding information, right? And so uh, in this case, you're looking at employee data. And so now I can see individuals, I can see like the Fed, I can see the dates, I can come to the right and see if they have exemptions or additional tax amounts, uh, personal exemptions, and I'm able to see all of the different fields that you have for withholding information uh, within the system here as well. Uh, and so this case is just a payroll specific report looking at employee data. And I don't know if you wanted to come in here once again, uh, filter, I can come here, filter, I don't know, let's just say Georgia, get that and boom, here's my list of people within Georgia. And I'm able to take this and once again, like I said, you can spit this out and see Georgia, see exemptions and see things like that. So very quick from one place, I'm able to get tactical data. 
that goes across like generic wage types like gross pay, net pay, company specific uh, wage types for like things like overtime or double time or shift premium. I'm able to look at employee master data. So this is one example of that. Um, another one you might want to see, I'll, I'll go look at this wage type report here just to kind of give an overview of like another way that you can kind of take a, a look at this data. And so the cool thing is once you have this and you define your reports, then you know they're, they're there for you and you can take a look at it. So this one has a, a bigger selection screen focused on payroll selections and even wage types. And so uh, if I take a look at this one, this is a report specifically around the payment amount uh, that people are going. So the amount that is going to someone's bank account. And so I think the thing I'll, I'll show about this report is if you have a retro. So I can show this James Brown over here. In this case, um, if you'll take a look at it, there's the concept uh, in SAP of in period versus for period. And so all of this happened in in period 2024-01, the first pay period that we, we ran of 2024. And it's four uh, periods of all of these other ones going all the way back from period one 2023 all the way uh if i scroll to the very bottom uh right here of you know 2023 2024 so it was a full year retro that happened for this employee and you're able to kind of see that and, and get an understanding of uh what's going on here with our retro being in place um just like i showed before if i wanted to sum this up i'm, I'm able to to do that very quickly and easily uh here and see the total amount at the bottom. And so this tells me exactly how much is going out to employee payments um, that we have to do on the, the bank file right here. Um, for, you know, in this case, I'm looking at a singular pay period. It's uh, pay period 2024 uh, 01. So the first pay period of 2024. And I'm able to kind of see this information and see what this looks like. And then the last one I'm going to show is actually a gigantic report. Uh, this is payroll results in columns. And so this one, I think, is if you just want to kind of see everything that makes up a uh, um, particular person's payroll. So I'll come over here and see a report that I uh, already ran. And so this one's, a, like I said before, a huge one. And so uh, as I expand it, I'll take a look at my one employee, Walter. I had fields about, okay, what company and location and type of employee and all of those. But as I scroll to the right, this is going to be kind of long. You can see this tab here, uh, but I'm able to see the cost center. But these are all of the wage types that are in the payroll results from what makes up the, the uh, 401k wage base so the, if you have 401k what it is based upon total gross um, these are technical wage types so um, net payments deductions um, base wages for psi so you know I scroll all over now these are getting into u.s taxation specific amounts and i'm able to see all of this and i can kind of scroll over to the right and, and see you know all of the details so you know, this really makes it so you can get the information you need. So if I scroll over to the right, you know, now I'm getting to the, the tax amount withheld. So this is withholding taxes that were actually taken out. This is uh, Social Security um, and able to really just get the data we want. So another example of a huge report. But needless to say, I think uh, one of the uh, big advantages of uh, SAP and uh, Query Manager, of course, is the fact that you know you have so many options for reporting. Whether it's employee data, whether it includes core HR data from success factors, and the nitty gritty of specific wage types you want to sort, you want to filter, you can do all of that, and you can uh, do it. Uh, directly from here, you know, launch it from success factors, access it from here, share it with other people, uh, have save variants so you don't have to go and run and, and do additional compute. So a lot of possibilities um, for reporting in SAP success factors employee central payroll. Thanks for watching.